So I made this raw denim apron. To make the pattern, I just held a measuring tape against my chest to figure out how wide and long I wanted it to be. I cut a rectangle out of some craft paper and folded it in half. To make sure that my horizontal lines were straight, I marked the length measurements on both ends of the folded paper and drew lines straight across that were half of what I wanted my final measurements to be. And then I connected them so that the top would be triangular and the skirt would be rectangular. Cutting it out and doing my best not to crease the folded edge so that my line stayed straight. Normally making a pattern from scratch would be more complicated, but luckily aprons are pretty simple and a good start for making your own patterns and pieces. I got this speckled raw indigo denim from Blackbird Fabrics, which is not too stiff and has this nice slubby texture. Placing the pattern one centimeter from the fabric edge, it's not selvage, but that's okay, and then weighing it down with some random weights that I have lying around. I used this clear plastic ruler against the pattern since the paper is really thin and marked all around it with chalk. This particular ruler has a half centimeter grid on it and I used that to make a one and a half centimeter seam allowance around every side except for the one on the fabric edge. This gives us a mark to fold for when we're constructing it and a mark for us to cut, and then cutting a bit off the corner so that the edges aren't too bulky. I then stitched the edges down with this vintage hand-turned Singer 20 that is a single thread chain stitch. I also realized that you can still make a chain stitch runoff with these single thread chain stitch machines. Since a chain stitch is just a series of loops, without the fabric in place, it just twists on itself creating this neat little trail of knots that also prevents the chain stitch from unraveling. For the pockets, I decided on a giant waist pocket and a smaller angled one that would sit partially nested inside of it. I also have these long strips for the string tying things, whatever they're called. Since our denim is naturally stiff, I just creased the fold for the pocket opening with my fingers and then stitched it close with a straight stitch one centimeter down from the fold. I did the same for the sides and bottom of the pocket and stitched them one centimeter in as well. I pinned them to the apron to ensure the placement looked good and then stitched right at the edge of the pocket to attach it to the apron. For the stringy thingies, I stitched them together with a straight stitch and held them folded with these surprisingly strong clips and then affixed them to the corners of the apron with a forward and back straight stitch. I knew I wanted a raw veg tanned leather neckband, so I used some of the leftover leather from the driving gloves that I made. I cut out two strips because I made one apron for my brother as well, and then used my lens cap to round the edges. Then I punched out this teardrop shaped hole for the buttons, and on one side I had a bunch of them for adjustability. I just really like the look of the teardrop hole, though it might have been a little bit big for how soft this leather is. I then added some buttons off camera, and now we have the finished apron. I also have a small collection of enamel pins, and I ended up just putting them on the apron. It actually worked out quite well because the very soft leather sometimes fell out of the large teardrop holes, so the weight of the pins helped keep tension on the neck and keep everything together. As for this large pocket, I didn't really have a plan in mind, but I ended up putting this dish towel into it. I'm sure most people would wipe their hands on the apron, but admittedly, denim isn't great for that. It's stiff, abrasive, and not terribly absorbent, so the dish towel is actually quite useful. Now, it's an apron, so I won't provide any styling advice per se, but you can swap out the dark denim shirt for a more textured light chambray, roll up the sleeves for the complete YouTube chef look, or swap it out for a red checkered shirt, and congratulations, you've made the transition from YouTube chef to leather worker. May your leather be veg tanned and cruelty free. Amen? I also didn't have a plan for the slanted pocket, Shears seem to be too large, but that's mostly the pins, which I don't really want to move. Maybe a thermopen, but step one, acquire a thermopen. The Amazon meat thermometer just is not cutting it. Anyways, if you make your own, I'd be interested to hear how it went for you. And also, I added this little loop thing on the inside so that I could hang it in my kitchen door.